Wow. <laughs> Just when you think they can't twist it up anymore, they do. What's up, beautiful people, and welcome to my very first review and analysis of a Netflix show, Behind Her Eyes. First show besides little fires everywhere that I've binged without constantly pausing to check how much time was left in the episode. It's properly sucked me in. Now there will be spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it but will like to. Also a lot of outtakes to illustrate my point. This is the perfect time to exit this video. Now the show is only six episodes which is perfect because I don't like long drawn out seasons with like 15 episodes. Who got time for all of that? Certainly not me. It was a miracle I even finished this show but it was of interest. There was not just one but two female leads and given that it's Women's History Month at the time of recording this video it was a perfectly good choice for reviewing. I should mention that I haven't read the book so this analysis is based purely on the things I picked up on as as I watched the show. Yeah, so this show definitely took me for a spin and I liked it. Did not see that twist coming. Definitely took wanting someone else's life to new heights. And we'll get into it, but first, what drew me in? The flawed characters. Take Louise for example. Can we just appreciate the fact that she wasn't assigned any of the usual black female tropes like mammy or sassy or ratchet? But then again, the show is based in the UK and I'm not entirely sure if those stereotypes apply there as well. Please let me know in the comments, my UK viewers. So Louise is very honest and assertive, but she's not rude. So often we see women retreat or lie when faced with a threat, but not Louise. A perfect example of that is when David comes over to Louise's apartment to ask her for the file that she stole from his cabinet after she got fired. Now obviously Louise should not have gotten involved with a married man, a married man who is her boss at that, and then be friends with his wife Adele who as we find out isn't really Adele the whole time, it's Rob. Anyway, you would have to be a very strong-willed woman to turn down a man like David showing up at your door all charismatic and charming. And Louise is pretty strong-willed, so that's saying a lot. Now on the flip side of that, which is my unpopular opinion, I was excited for her. Her son Adam is away for the summer and she's single, beautiful, and young. She deserves a bit of excitement in her life. Not with someone's husband, but situations, you know. He showed up at her doorstep, alcohol was involved once thing led to another. The other layer of that is, as excited as I was for her, I also felt sorry for her. That man was not going to leave his wife for her. He was getting from Louise what he was missing in his marriage and that gets him a high but not enough to leave his wife. So in a sense, he's using Louise. You can see in episode 3 when David drops by Louise's apartment for the second time after they've slept together the previous night. You can see the look in her eyes when he starts to give her compliments and tells her that she shines. On the surface, it appears very sweet, but A, he's married, and B, there's something almost exploitative about it. I mean, she's just revealed to him her troubles with dating, and then he gets right up close to her face and starts telling her how special she is. And all of this coming from someone she was initially digging before she found out he was married and her boss. So why wouldn't she latch onto that? And again, as special as he finds Louise, he won't leave his Adele for her. Can't leave her, even though we know it's not really Adele, but he doesn't know that. Now this brings me to the Easter eggs, indication that Adele really is Rob all along. We'll start with the morning after Louise and David meet at the bar and Louise comes into work to find out that David is her new boss. So David is in the office with Dr. Sharma, who I'm guessing hired him, and Adele is present as well. And she asks Dr. Sharma if she could see David's office so she could picture where all the magic happens. Now this wasn't even something I thought was relevant but it's the most relevant part of the story and we'll get into why it is relevant. But let's move on to Easter egg number two, which isn't much of an Easter egg. It's obvious. The very first rehab scene when Rob is introduced 
sitting on a tree branch. He told that nurse in a very crass way that he preferred men, which manifested in his first controlled dream with that half-naked waiter. I noticed very early on that a lot of scenes with David and Louise were shots from above, mainly focusing on David. This gave us, the viewers, the impression that someone else was in the room with them, which we now know was Rob. He was using astral projection, which enabled him to detach his soul from his body and travel wherever he liked. Now back to my first point, Rob, as well as Adele, who was the one who taught Rob how to do the astral projection, can only travel to places they've been. This was why Rob, as Adele, wanted to check out David's office on that very first day, so she could travel there and spy on David, since David wasn't aware that she possessed such ability. Rob as Adele and Louise in the coffee shop. Adele got really interested when Louise mentioned that she sleepwalks. Well, you see, Rob equally sleepwalked. That's what got him in rehab. Well, that and his drug addiction. Well, the boy who sleepwalks. Is that why you're here? The night terrors. Bad habits. They think the bad dreams are connected to the drugs. And if you're still here with me, go ahead and leave a wine glass emoji in the comments. Next clue was that little red book that Rob as Adele gave to Louise. A few pages were missing at the end there. Rob as Adele wanted Louise to read it and eventually learn how to do the astral projection. Why? So Rob could eventually take over Louise's body since David was into Louise and Rob was into David. I have to tell you I was fooled initially because in that little red book, Rob is gushing over Adele and how much he loves her and how beautiful she is. So I wouldn't expect him to do something like that to her. But he's sneaky. Remember Rob had asked Adele how it felt to be rich and beautiful. And Adele had said it was lonely. What is it like to be so fucking rich and so fucking great? That's lonely. And he had said this in response. I swap you. I give my little ball up to have zero friends in this house. <laughs> well, he wasn't kidding. Even on his way to visit her at her mansion, he'd even said it, that Adele was an escape from his life. Can't believe I'm escaping. That's what Adele is. An escape from my life. Fuck off, old life. Hello, new. Now let's get into the manipulation. That was the scariest part of it all. Adele was so trusting and it cost her her life. Louise as well, but they both had this savior complex. Adele's parents had died in the fire and she felt guilty about not having saved them. And Louise's mom had died, I'm guessing, of a drug overdose. Louise's friend Sophie had warned her too. And the losers in this situation, apart from Adele and Louise, are David because he ends up with the same person in the different body and Adam, Louise's son, who immediately notices that some Something is off with his mother. Mommy! Is everything alright? Never better. Let's go. Ready? Smart kid, that Adam. I really hope there's a second season because how much more mind bending can it get? I'd really love to see it. Literally nothing was what it seemed except for Louise really loving her son. The whole time I'm thinking, David's fallen out of love with his wife because she's sick, but he can't leave her because of the secret they share. Meanwhile, he's scared. He knows something is off with his wife, but doesn't know exactly what. One scene that proves this is when David is at Louise's and Louise asks about the scar on his arm and what happened to the girl he rescued, which was Adele. David simply says he's not sure and that it was a long time ago. What happened to the girl? I'm really not sure. So you never went into the car up? It's a long time ago. Again, I think he's being dismissive of his sick wife at this point, but he really doesn't know what happened to his wife because the woman in his house is not his wife. Another scene that Adele is really robbed is when Adele asks David if the addicts he's helping off the clock really want to be helped. I'll be home late. I'm meeting a couple of charities about some community recovery work. Do you ever wonder what they think? The junkies on those estates when you turn up. What do you mean? Do you think they really want to stop? Maybe they like getting high. Those rehab idiots don't understand. Some of us don't want to stop. Or when Adele is furiously slicing that red bell pepper 
right after David's visit to Louise's. She knows David is messing around and is furious, or when she checks Louise out as they walk to the coffee shop together. Rob, as Adele, is wondering what it'll be like to be in that body, Louise's body. Let's chat in the comment section. What do you think of the show if you've watched it? I'm thinking the lesson here is don't let your guard down ever, or that you can never be someone else no matter how hard you try. Rob, as Adele, I think, tries to behave the way he thinks she would behave, but it doesn't land right. Even the way Rob, as Adele, dresses is very different from the way the real Adele dresses. The real Adele, once she got out of rehab, was always wearing casual florals. Rob, as Adele, wears mostly neutral tones. Very rarely does she wear patterns. It's really sad. All Rob wants is to be loved, and he can't get it from David as himself, so he has to steal Adele's body. Doesn't work. Tries to turn Louise against David. Worked for a while there, but then it didn't. So guess what? He has to steal Louise's body too. I'm telling you, watching the series a second time, knowing what I now know, I noticed the very subtle hints. The only thing I didn't get was why Louise kept having nightmares about Adam disappearing down that dingy hallway and then getting stuck in a wall. Perhaps it was foreshadowing because she did end up losing Adam to Rob in the very end. One last thing, I noticed Louise wore a lot of green and yellow. Even in her nightmare, she was wearing yellow. The walls in the living room of her apartment were yellow and green as well. And her astral projection was a combination of yellow and green. Rob's was blue, as was the walls of the living room of Rob as Adele and David's house. Brilliant! The show gets an A- rating from me. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And drop a black heart emoji in the comments. That's how I'll know you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye!